Hi, I'm Mike Hess, Senior Director for Patient Education and Outreach at the COPD Foundation. I'm joined today by Dr. Gerard Kreiner, Director of the Temple Lung Center at Temple Health in Philadelphia, and a leading expert in lung volume reduction procedures. Dr. Kreiner, it's a pleasure to have you with us today. Nice to be here, Mike. Thanks for inviting me. So bronchoscopic lung volume reduction with endobronchial valves is a relatively new treatment option that we have for certain people with severe emphysema. Could you let us know a little bit more about why someone would have this procedure done and how these valves work? So this is really for patients that are on maximal medical therapy. They're taking their breathing medicines, they're using oxygen if they're supposed to be on oxygen therapy. And despite that, they're still short of breath. <clears throat> and they suffer from emphysema, which is really um, an abnormality that causes destruction of the lung that doesn't let the lung empty normally. So air traps in that area and makes the portion of the lung very large. So when they try to take another deep breath in, they can't because it never deflated in the first place. Now, how do they work? It's pretty simple. You have two options. You can cut the lung out or you can deflate the lung. This is a non-invasive option. This uses a bronchoscope that puts tiny one-way valves that are about the size of an eraser on the end of a pencil, and it blocks the air going into a lobe, but lets the air come out. If someone is interested in a procedure like this, how would you screen them or, or otherwise figure out if they're eligible or a good candidate for this kind of procedure? Yeah, good question. You make sure the patient's on optimal medical therapy first. You make sure that they have emphysema by CAT scan imaging, and you make sure their breathing study shows they're sick enough, but not too sick, too sick, and that their lungs are large. What does the procedure itself look like to place these valves? Yeah, the patient is put to sleep under general anesthesia. They have a breathing uh, tube in place, an endotracheal tube, just for the procedure. Then the bronchoscope is placed through the breathing tube, and the bronchoscopist steers the bronchoscope to the region to be treated, the portion of the lung to be treated, and places these endobronchial valves by looking visually where they should be placed. Are there ever cases where maybe you've, you've screened these folks and they're interested in and they undergo the procedure and they seem like a good candidate, but they seem to have a delay in the improvement of their symptoms? It's been a couple of months and they haven't really seen any benefit. Um, and related to that, are there people that just don't benefit from this procedure? Yeah, so most patients that are going to benefit from this procedure will show benefit over six weeks. If they don't show uh, improvement over that period of time, and we can measure that by the lobe that we treated collapsing over time by x-ray imaging. If that doesn't happen, there's a couple reasons. The valves aren't in the proper location. They're not either big enough or large enough to block the area, or they could be slightly rotated and not occlude the airway, or there could be something outside the lung. The lining around the lung is called the pleura, and it could be adherent to the chest wall and not allowing the lung to come down. Oh, you mentioned a little while ago that there are there a great many years of clinical evidence behind this. We've seen trials such as uh, one called Liberate and one called Improve, uh, but you also use these valves in your day-to-day your -day practice. Has a bronchoscopic lung volume reduction shown the same results in your practice that were reported in some of these clinical trials? For most of the studies, 65 to 70 percent of patients show, had shown benefit in these trials that were FDA approved. In my, my clinical practice, I've done since FDA approval, about 175 patients over the last year and a half to two years. And our treatment outcomes are a little bit better because we basically pick patients that are most likely to improve and don't use this therapy on patients when other forms of therapy might be more appropriate to a patient. Have you seen any surprises in the real world data? Yeah, I have. Some of the, the studies were done that they didn't look at the longer term treatment effects. And our goal is to maintain lung reduction for the long term. So in some cases, we have to readjust valves because over time, they may torque a little bit or they might move slightly. Um, and patients to maintain that effect might, get a, might need to get a repeat uh, treatment effect. So we've talked a lot about the, the upsides to this particular procedure. Are there risks? Are there, is it, how does the safety profile look? The risks are there, but they're acceptable in, in relationship to the treatment benefit in most circumstances. And we, we know a lot about how to mitigate those risks. To get a treatment effect with emphysema, you have to do enough to deform the tissue. And when you have that deform, deformation treatment effect, that will cause that lobe to collapse and another lobe on the same side to expand. 
And if that's beyond the point of the normal plasticity of that non-treated lobe, then it can make a small rent in that that may cause an air leak that you might need a, a tube in the chest to be able to let that heal over a couple days. Have you come across any common misconceptions in your practice that people have about the bronchoscopic lung volume reduction? People or patients. So I think most patients want to come off oxygen, and that's a laudable goal. This might help your oxygenation, but doesn't really erase the need in most patients. It may decrease the need in about 85%. Is there anything in particular that you emphasize as you're trying to help people uh, decide whether this procedure is right for them? What I try to do is go over the benefits of the therapy and what the complications are. I also want to make sure that the patient understands what other alternatives exist for them in terms of either medical therapy, surgical therapy, transplant in some cases, and make sure that the risk-benefit uh, ratio always favors the benefit in an individual patient or basically offer the patient other solution. I also make clear that it doesn't work in all patients. Like I said, it works in 75% of patients overall, but I, have, and I try to map out a course for patients. If this doesn't work, what's the next thing we can do for them? to try to like make them less short of breath, make them more functional, and really attain the goals of treatment that they want. So managing expectations is an important component as well. Managing expectations, but providing a roadmap of other possible treatments that are available. Is there anything that in particular that people can do to maximize and prolong the benefits of, of bronchoscopic lung volume reduction? Yeah, there is. There's several. One is to maintain their uh, optimal body weight, either lose weight in some cases or gain weight in others. Exercise and improve their functional performance by having, uh, we have patients do acute rehab before and maintenance rehab, and that should be a lifelong effort. And then the third thing is take the medications and non-medical therapy important for COPD. If that's related to just inhaled therapies or inhaled plus oral or use of uh, oxygen and get vaccination. Uh, if there's one thing in particular that you would tell physicians who are thinking about referring uh, a patient to your program or to another uh, BLVR program, uh, what would that advice be? I think the most important thing for the referring physician to be comfortable to, with the person that they're um, referring the patient to for the procedure, have confidence and have a dialogue with them, and transfer information back and forth freely. Work together as a team with the patient. Great. Great. Dr. Gerard Kreiner from the Temple Lung Center, thank you for spending some time with us today and sharing your expertise on bronchoscopic lung volume reduction procedures. Thank you very much. Pleasure.